Uh, my name is uh, Ivan. I work as software engineer in, in the Jazz team. In fact, I joined to SUSE uh, uh, last year, more or less one year and a half ago. And during all this time, I have been main involved in the implementation of the new uh, Just storage stack. Well, uh, this presentation is basically a follow-up of the previous one given by Anchor. By, but here, uh, we are going to see more technical details about the new uh, Just storage stack. So, uh, first of all, uh, what is uh, storage ng? Well, I think this was uh, very well explained by my teammate Ankur in the previous presentation. But, well, in case you couldn't attend to, the, to that presentation, very quickly, only to say that uh, storage ng is basically a re-implementation of the uh, storage uh, stack layer that just uses uh, to deal with all the devices related with, with storage. For example, the disk, partitions, file systems, or whatever. So, just uh, use uh, two packages, leaf storage and just uh, storage for this. And now with, with uh, storage ng, those two packages has been re have been replaced by the new, the new ones, uh, leaf storage ng and just storage ng. Well, uh, those packages are uh, already included in the last uh, OpenSUSE lib 15 that was released yesterday. And also, uh, these packages uh, are included in, tab in TabBackWin uh, since uh, January. So if you have uh, installed on TabBackWin lately, most likely you are already using a storage ng, so sorry. And um, okay. Uh, the Just Storage stack uh, offers to the user two main uh, components. One of them is the storage uh, proposal, and this uh, this presentation is mainly focused on on this on this tool because well uh, this component con is probably the component with more changes uh, compared with the old version in the in the old storage. So we are going to talk a lot, about, a lot about this. And then the, another main component that uh, just storage uh, offers is the spare partitioner. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you uh, have already used this, this tool. And in fact, if you take a look to the new, uh, to the new spare partitioner in, in storage ng, you can realize that uh, it's pretty, pretty similar to the previous one. In fact, it's a clone of the previous of the previous one, but that is true only for from the UI point of view, because under the hood, the code of the set of the expert partitioner is completely new as the rest of the storage stack. So we can say goodbye to all the old bugs, but also welcome to new ones. At least now the code is much more easier to fix and also is much more easier to extend. Now we can add new uh, new features that with the old code, it would be simply impossible. So let's go uh, with the storage proposal. Well, when we start uh, a new installation, this step, the system probing, system probing uh, step, is the first time when the storage ng is used by the installer. Here, in this step, all your storage devices are recognized, all your, all your disks, partitions, file system, LBM. And then, in the next step of, uh, in, during the installation, uh, is the dialogue for the storage proposal. So, what is the main goal of the storage proposal? Basically, it will try to create all the necessary partitions to perform a new installation. And not only that, the storage proposal is also able to detect 
what partitions are necessary in your system for properly boot after the installation. So if we take a look, well, the letter is too small, but trust me if <laughs> in this sequence of actions, the first one, uh, the proposal will try to delete some existing partitions. Then uh, it'll, it will try to reuse one uh, existing swap. Then it will propose to create a root partition with certain size and using ButterFS as the, full, as the as file system. Uh, it also proposed to create a separate partition for, for home. And in the last, uh, and then it also uh, proposed in this case to create a BIOS, uh, a BIOS boot partition for properly boot the system. Uh, well, all the information the proposal needs to create uh, the necessary partitions for, for the installation uh, are defined in a control file. The control file is a special file that is contained in the installation medium. And this file uh, defines all the necessary uh, information that the proposal needs. For example, what partitions are necessary to create for lib, uh, or uh, the file system to use for root, the minimal size of each partition, all these kind of things are defined in the control file. So when we arrive to this dialog for the first time, the system automatically creates this initial uh, proposal based on all this information contained in the, in the control file. But in case you don't like this uh, initial proposal, the user, uh, for example, uh, in some cases, the proposal can mm, remove some partition that you don't want to touch, or simply you don't want a separate uh, home partition, or whatever. If you want to change this kind of things, the user can do it using the guided setup button. When we use this button, the guided setup, we'll go through a, a sequence of uh, dialogues where we can configure uh, several uh, options, and then the system will create a new proposal according to the options we have selected. So this is the, uh, the first dialog that we will see if you use this uh, guided setup button. Well, in fact, uh, this dialog is only presented in in case we have several of these in our system. And here, we can select uh, the candidate disks. The candidate disks are basically uh, which disk we want that the proposal use for, for the installation. In case you, we don't want that to use uh, any spe specific disk, we can unselect that disk here and then the proposal will not touch that this at all. So once we have selected uh, our candidate disk, the next step in the guided setup, in this next step, we can select uh, several options. First of all, we can uh, indicate uh, which uh, candidate disk we want to use as root disk. The root disk is simply where uh, to place the root partition. And then we have uh, three combo box. Sorry if the, you can read, if you cannot read the, the text, but well, the first uh, combo box is, uh, well, these three uh, combo box are to select, uh, to indicate to the proposal uh, what we want to do with the existing partitions. The first combo box is for the Windows partitions, the second one for the Linux partitions, and the last one for other kind of partitions. And for each one, uh, we can indicate, for example, if we want that the proposal simply removes all these kind of partitions, or if we want the proposal only remove uh, some of these partitions if it's strictly necessary to make a space for the new partitions for the installation, 
or we can also indicate uh, if we don't to touch that kind of partitions. And in the case of the Windows partitions, there are more options. For example, we can uh, indicate to the proposal that we want to resize our current Windows partitions to make free space. The next step, in the next step of the guided setup, we have uh, two more options. Here, uh, in, the uh, in the first uh, checkbox, if, if we check that, we are indicated that we want to create the, the new installation using LBM logical volumes instead of plain partitions. And with the second checkbox, we are indicating that we want to encrypt all the new partitions that the proposal will create. Of course, we have also to introduce the, the password for, for the looks. Well, and this is the, the last step in, in, in this, dia in this uh, guided setup. And here, uh, first, we can select the file system type to use for, for the root partition. And in case we have selected a ButterFS file system, we have also the option to indicate if we want to uh, enable a snapshots or not. And then for, uh, for home and for swap, we can check if we actually want to create a separate partition for that, for home or for, or for, for swap. And in the case of the swap, we have a second checkbox to indicate that uh, we want to uh, enlarge the swap partitions according to the size of the RAM for suspending the system. In this example, we have unchecked the home partition, the, the option for the separate home. So in this case, the proposal should not create uh, a specific partition for, for home. So once we have uh, indicated all the options we want for the new proposal, the system create a new proposal, taking into account all these options. So now, in the sequence of uh, actions, first, uh, the, in, the, in the first uh, actions, it will create encrypted partition because we select, selected the option uh, for encrypt partitions. Uh, it also create a, a volume group, and then it will create uh, two uh, logical volumes, one for root, another one for swap. But in this case, it will not create a, se a separate volume for, for home. So this is basically, basically the, the way the user has uh, to work with the proposal. So when we start the installation, uh, an initial proposal is automatically created according to the settings in the control file. And in case we don't like that proposal, we can use the, this guided setup to, to try to create another one. So now we are, to, uh, we are, we are going to see uh, how is the algorithm that storage ng uses uh, to generate the, the proposal. Well, the algorithm is, uh, is, is, is based uh, in three main uh, steps. In the first step, uh, the proposal uh, will uh, plan a set of, uh, of partitions to create for the installation. The partitions to create, as, commented, as already commented, are based on the information in the control file or in the settings selected by the user in the guided setup. So once it knows uh, what partitions uh, we, we uh, have to create, the second step is to make uh, in, uh, enough free space on the disk to place that, uh, that plan partitions. So once we have uh, enough uh, free space, the white rectangles represent free spaces on a disk. So once we have enough free space, the last step is to create the plan partitions using this free space, distribu distributing the, the partitions in the best possible way. 
To make a free space, the, the storage proposal also follows uh, several steps. First of all, in case we have select the option, remove even if not needed uh, for, some, for some kind of partition in, in the guided setup, if we have select that option, the proposal first will remove all uh, this all uh, partition of this kind. For example, if we select that for Linux partition, it will it automatically will remove all these all Linux partitions independently of this is necessary or not uh, to make free space for the new partitions to create. Then, in the second step. If we have select uh, the option to, for resizing uh, window partitions, it will try to resize uh, our current Windows partitions to make enough free space. And then, in the last step, and in case that uh, we still need more free space, it will try to remove uh, all partitions where we have select the option remove if needed. So, for example, if we have select that for Linux partition, it will start to remove this kind of partitions, Linux partition in that case, starting from the end of the disk, and it remove one by one partitions until it makes enough space. Well, this this way of re, of making a space of removing partition, start, starting from the end and deleting one by one, is more or less easy to implement, but uh, it has uh, some problems. For example, imagine we have a disk uh, where there is already some free space. And we have select that option, remove if needed for Linux partitions. Well, theoretically, uh, only removing the first Linux partition that follows the, the free space, imagine that simply removing that uh, Linux partition would be enough to make a free space for the new partitions we want to create. So we only have to remove one partition for that. But our algorithm, instead of that, it will start to remove partitions from the end. So it will remove first these Linux partitions, then the swap, and in the worst case, it will even remove all the Linux partitions. So at the end, in some cases, we can remove more partitions than the strictly necessary. Obviously, this is something that we have to rethink again and um, probably will improve this way of making a space in, in future releases. Well, once uh, we have made enough space to create all the plan partitions, the next step in the algorithm consists on distribute all the plan partitions into the free spaces. This task is uh, more complex than it looks at first because well, we have to take into account uh, several restrictions. For example, if we are working with a MS-DOS partition table, we cannot create more than three primary partitions. That is something to take into account. And also, we have to do, consider the alignment of the partitions and so on. So, it's not so easy to dis distribute the planet partition to several free spaces. For example, imagine this first uh, possible distribution where the proposal plays the boot and the swap partitions into the free uh, into the first free space because it, there is enough space for that. Well, but if we uh, if we do that, the second free uh, free space is useless because we cannot create more primary partitions. So 
root and home should be created as logical partitions in the last free space. Well, the proposal, uh, the proposal will generate all the possibilities, all the possible distributions of the plane partition of, into the free spaces. And well, and then it uh, will evaluate uh, each of these uh, distributions, taking into account, for example, the total free space that is not used at the end, or the number of cap in, in the disk, or other, other more conditions. So it evaluates each possible distribution, and then it selects the best possible. In this example, the best one could be something like this last distribution that is presented in the, in the slide, where it was able to distribute all the plant partitions without leaving free space at the end in, in the disk. This is the, so this is the general algorithm uh, to generate a, a, a new proposal. So in the first step, it plan a set of partitions, take it upon the control file and the settings indicated by the user. Then it removes partitions. Then it calculate and evaluate all the possible distributions. And at the end, it select the best one. Well, actually, this is a simplistic view of the algorithm because Actually, the, the, algo, the algorithm is, uh, is more complex. Here, we are not mm, taking into account, for example, the case when we are creating uh, logical volumes, when we have selected in the guide setup that we want to use LBM. In this case, the algorithm is a little bit more complex, but well, in gen I think that, in general, this is enough to, to understand the, the general idea of the, of the proposal. And now, before, oh, how many times I have been? <laughs> okay, yeah. So, uh, before finishing, I want to talk a little bit uh, more about, uh, about the stuff that the proposal tried to reuse. Well, when the proposal, uh, plan to create a swap partition, it, uh, it always try to reuse some of the existing swaps. So it will uh, search for all the current swaps that already exist uh, on the disk, and it'll select the, the swap partition that fits better with the swap we want to create. And on the other hand, when we are making a space and we delayed some existing swap partitions, the proposal also tried to reuse the UUID and the label of the remove uh, swap partitions. We, uh, we do that uh, to try to, no, um, to not uh, break some other existing uh, Linux installations. Um, another thing that the proposal will try to reuse is the volume, the existing volume groups. If we have indicated in the guide setup that that we want to create, uh, uh, that we want to use uh, LBM for for the proposal, in that case, the proposal uh, will search uh, for uh, existing volume groups and it will try to reuse it. In this case, in this case if, if the proposal uh, finds some uh, existing volume groups, it will try to not remove the partitions that are used as physical volumes. But on the other hand, uh, the logical volumes, it, it can uh, remove the logical volumes if it if is necessary for creating the new logical volumes for the installation. 
So at the end, maybe uh, this way of reusing volume groups is something that doesn't make much sense because if at the end we are removing the existing logical volumes, we are losing our data. So, so why to reuse then the volume group? That is another questionable decision that uh, we have to rethink. Um, well, probably to improve in future releases of the code. Um, I think that that is basically all that I wanted to tell you. I hope that you now have a better understanding of what is happening with your with your partitions when you are create, installing uh, Tumbleweed or Leap since yesterday. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. And now if you have some questions. Hey, um, I'm not sure if I missed it, but I think in Anchor's talk, uh, you talked that there's lib storage and there's a YAS module, which is then the Ruby implementation. So why is it split it or why it was not possible to have everything in the Ruby? Yeah, uh, I, I know if you were here in the previous um, in the previous talk, but well, anyway. Uh, leaf storage is basically the the, very, the background, the low level uh, the low level layer of the storage. So it's mm, it's mainly uh, for working at low level, for creating partitions, format partitions, create uh, logical volumes, and so on. But uh, all the high-level logic, uh, for example, uh, to, for all the logic for the proposal to calculate the actions that uh, we need to, uh, the, the partition we need to remove, or the new partition we need to create, all this. A high level uh, logic is uh, implemented in the just storage package because it's something that we can say that is only for just not for not, not it's not for a general usage it's only for just so that is one of the other reasons that this is split in, in two packages uh, if you want to set up a rate array how is that done Sorry, I didn't get it. If, you, if we want to, to have uh, our file systems on RAID uh, arrays, how is that done? I would have expected that at the same place where you put them on LVM. I know pretty sure I get the, your question. Uh, what do you mean? How, how can if, if I have several disks and I want to uh, put them into a RAID array, uh, and I saw no way to do that with the, the current setup. With the rate, uh, well, the proposal at this moment is not able to work with software rates. It only works with BIOS rate. But in the case of software rates, if you want to create a new installation using that, you have to use the spare partitioner. Probably we will add also the option in the proposal to to be able to work with, with software rates in the future. For example, if there is already a software rate created, then probably we should try to reuse that software rate for the installation. Right now, the proposal will remove the software rate if it's necessary. Yeah. I'm not sure if that I, uh, I have answered your question or not. So back to the question, right now this proposal is for a particular use case that is the guided installation for a newbie. But if you want a soft to, you want to create a software rate, then of course the question that just has to ask you are a different set of questions. Like with this right, uh, le which level of rate, mirroring, stripping, uh, based on partitions, or you so it's actually a different algorithm asking for different uh, questions. And the idea is to have such such wizard as well in the expert partitioner, but it's actually a wizard 
for a different use case that will ask different questions that will provide you something similar in the end, but it's, yeah, I mean, there, there is no default answer for anything. If you want to create the rate, you first have to tell me which kind of rate extended in which list and for which purposes. So it's a different beast. And also about the reasons for, for breaking it into a library and, and the just specific part, we had the expectation that the library is uh, useful for other projects as Kiwi or even Machinery was, so the library is C++, so you don't need the whole uh, Ruby runtime to run it in your own project, like Kiwi, Machinery, whatever, and we provide um, bindings for Ruby and Python uh, apart from C++ itself, so it was just to not make something that nobody else could take advantage of. More questions? No? So, thanks for your attention.